All right. So hi, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us on this evening. Um, it's so exciting to see so many new as well as familiar faces. I'm David. Um, I'm a UVM student. I'm a senior at UVM. Been um, working with the Progressive Party for a couple of years. Um, and I'm going to be doing the sort of emceeing tonight, just helping to facilitate things a little bit, um, which I'm super grateful to have the opportunity to do. Um, yeah, thanks so much again, everybody, for coming, um, you know, and for being here and to, for um, your interest and participation in the Progressive Party and for working to build, yeah, the biggest third party in the country um, and really um, helping to make um, some substantive changes in the city, fighting for BIPOC folks, fighting for um, working class families and other marginalized groups. It's really exciting what we're doing together. Um, just a couple of introductory notes. Um, one is just that, as we have it now, just to avoid kind of Zoom bombing and for kind of other security issues, right now everybody's muted um, and isn't going to be able to unmute themselves. Uh, but if you do really want to say something, feel free to shoot a message. And you're always welcome to share thoughts in the chat to communicate and talk in the chat. Um, as well, um, just make sure that I keep things. Um, respectful, basically, and to focus on ideas rather than attacking individuals and so on. But apart from that, yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Um, and I guess I'll pass it over to um, Josh Ronsky to talk about some of the caucus rules, if that's good. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining tonight. It's really exciting. This is probably our biggest um, we had almost 220 people um, sign up. So this is a good sized caucus for us, even in a year where it's not a mayoral race. Um, so, you know, going through um, going through the caucus tonight, um, we have a couple of rules that should be fairly familiar for folks who have participated um, in our nominating process before. So um, generally speaking, we welcome anyone to participate in the election, providing that they um, support the Progressive Party, which means they're supportive of our platform and our statement of principles, which I'm going to post links to in the chat right now. Um, moving forward, you're going to hear from the candidates. So we, we will ask each candidate to have a nominator um, as, and then um, from, from their ward, and then also they can accept the nomination. So we've given each candidate um, about five minutes between those two things. So um, someone may make a short speech on their behalf and also the candidate may make an acceptance speech and we'll be getting into that um, very shortly. Um, so that's the thrust of the um, agenda tonight, the main item. After the caucus, um, I'm gonna be sending out ballots um, via OPA vote to everyone who registered. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I'm, at the end of the agenda, I'm actually gonna go through and I'll show you how how that works um, in case folks have questions um, and people can also feel free to post um, questions in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, this, is, this should be familiar to anyone who participated last cycle um, in the mayoral caucus. It's a very similar process. Um, and I look forward to engaging in this with all of you. It's very exciting to see you all here. So that's all for me. All right. Sounds great, yeah. Thanks so much, Josh. Um, okay, so next, we just wanted to note that, um, unfortunately, uh, but in sort of a bittersweet moment, there are two um, progressive party uh, city councilors who we know have announced to not run um, for re-election um in this march so that is ward eight city councilor jane stromberg and ward two city councilor and city council president max tracy um both have been incredibly admirable city councilors fighting for working class families over the past years um max tracy has been a leading um progressive city councilor for over a decade now um as i'm sure folks are all aware of and um, of course put up an incredibly admirable um, mayoral run last year. And then Jane Stromberg um, has been a leading young person uh, 
who ran um, a really admirable city council campaign um, a couple of years ago that I was really um, honored to be able to participate in. And so we're incredibly grateful for the work that they've been doing, um, building the movement, fighting for some of these cutting edge issues and um, just setting a model for, for more candidates um, and um, leaders to come. So unfortunately, Max Tracy was not able to make it tonight. Um, he has council work that he's working on right now, but I do want to pass the floor over to Ward 8 Councillor Jane Stromberg um, so she can talk about um, some of the work that she's been doing on council and in future plans. So if you wanna go ahead, Jane. All right. <laughs> thanks, David. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, this is a very, it really is bittersweet for me because um, I, I don't know, you, you kind of plan to run your race and then sometimes you're like, whoa, did I just get elected and that happened? And you're like, okay, now I'm in office. And then you never really think about what time looks like as you kind of move through those motions of being in office and, and, and kind of letting that go. Um, I have been incredibly honored to have served in this role as city councilor as a young local leader. Um, I started off my life here in Burlington as a student at UVM and quickly became involved heavily in climate activism. And I never thought in a million years that I would end up on the Burlington City Council. Um, and I kind of met some realities um, you know, kind of face them myself in, in many ways in the last couple of months and, and came to the conclusion that I did need to step down at this time to focus on my mental health um, because, you know, it, the, the last two years have been very, very long in many ways. Um, and I just, I, I felt like in some ways and not to sugarcoat it, that I was kind of pouring from a somewhat empty glass. And I don't want to, I, I, I want to do the best I can. And I want to do everything justice moving forward and, and making sure that I, if I am to ever serve in the future, that I'm, I am at my 100% again. Um, and so I need to do what is right for me in this moment. And I, I'm just so incredibly grateful to have had this experience. I know for the rest of my life, no matter where I go or what I do, or, you know, I'm pretty much not going anywhere, but um, direct actions, connecting with people and building the movement will always be a huge part of my life. Um, I'm not closing any books or putting them away. I'm simply throwing in a bookmark and I just, I would never have had an incredible time on this council or even during my campaign if it weren't for the numerous amazing human beings in my corner. There are too many to count. Most of them are right in this meeting, which is amazing. Um, but I'm, I'm so proud of the work that I was able to accomplish with my colleagues on the council, with, with Jack and with Zariah, with Max, with Brian Pine when he was serving, um, with Perry and, 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 and now Joe and, and, and even folks across the aisle. I mean, I've had so many fruitful, incredible, uh, informative conversations with people. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot <clears throat> about the issues that Burlington faces and, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm incredibly proud that my first ever um, resolution I actually passed was on divestment um, for the city of Burlington, which meant so much to me because I put in a lot of work ahead of time, but I also had been really plugged in with the divestment movement when I first moved here to Burlington. So it was incredible to see that pass unanimously after so many months of work um, on that particular resolution. Um, I was incredibly proud of, you know, just standing with unions um, left and right throughout all of the, the pandemic's changes and, and just incredibly unfair tactics and, and, and a lot of the budget cuts at UVM and where people were feeling the most, most pain in that way and, and being able to just literally stand with working people, nurses, you know, teachers, every, like a whole plethora of just the wit the people who literally make society work. Um, and I, I just, I really am so honored to, to have been a part of that. Um, there's a, quite a few things that we were able to pass, but a lot of it focused on climate, um, the climate crisis and, and social justice and um, especially lately with the Sears Lane situation. Um, 
and having those those conversations with people and just really trying to fight for what is right. Um, the one thing I'm so proud of, probably the absolute most proud of, was was standing with um, Councillor Hightower in in the racial justice resolution we passed in June of 2020. That was an incredible moment. It 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 started so many conversations and so many committee meetings and so many pieces of the puzzle, but. Um, it, it was, it was absolutely necessary and, um, it is to this day, the, the most proud thing I've ever done in my life was, was to vote on that and, and work with Councillor Hightower and our progressive caucus with that. Um, I think it was just, it was, it was time and there's a lot of work ahead of us and a lot of work for the councillors moving forward, but, I'm just incredibly proud to be part of that, even if it's just a sliver. So um, I'm, I could go on forever and I'm not going to. So thank you very, very much um, for all the support and the love and the care and the inspiration. Um, I would have never been in this position if it weren't for all of you. So thank you very much. Great, well, thank you so, so much, Jane, for that, for all of your work and for that really inspiring uh, speech to help to help ground us. Um, we'll miss you, but know that we'll be in touch, obviously, and are excited um, for the next step on the road. Um, so now I'd like to pass it over to Jill, um, who is the party co-chair, um, along with um, Annie Schneider. And thanks so much, Jill, uh, for all of your party work thus far. And um, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Jane, I really do appreciate your passion, uh, hard work. It, it's, it's been a really heavy lift for the last two years. So I don't think anybody begrudges you taking a break. Um, yeah, as David said, I'm really fortunate to be co-chair of the Burlington Progressive Party Steering Committee, along with my, my pal, Annie Schneider. Um, your financial support of the Progressive Party in this moment is really critical for a variety of different reasons. Uh, first, state house policy uh, receives a lot of support from the staff of the Progressive Party. Uh, so the good work of Celine and uh, Brian and, and others um, is, is backstopped by um, the, the, the strong uh, work, work of the staff. Second, um, we do a lot of organizing, as you know, on, on critical issues and or organizing requires time, effort, intelligence. You've also seen the abundance of communication, which is targeted at members of the Progressive Party, but also the larger community, uh, you know, educating about key issues and, and mobilizing folks uh, around particular strategies, particular uh, policies. Um, and finally, kind of what we're doing this evening, uh, helping candidates understand what it takes to run, what it takes to be successful, how to be organized, uh, and, and disciplined to be successful in uh, se securing Im important seats uh, in, in City Hall. So I really encourage people to, to give today, give what you're able to do. Um, my wife, Amy, who's here next to me, uh, she and I are sustaining members, have been for a number of years. Uh, so if you're able to be a sustaining member by making a monthly contribution, that's really helpful so that the party knows uh, and, and can plan ahead uh, for the essential investments and those things I just ticked off. Uh, I think Josh just dropped a link into the chat uh, for folks who want to know how, how to give, where to give, uh, do, do check there. Um, so, so thank you again. Uh, thank you, David. Great. Thanks so much again, Jill. Yeah. If if folks are able to donate, that's incredibly, incredibly appreciated to help fund and sustain um, the party and movement that we're building. Um, so next up, we are going to go into nominations for all of these seats. Um, so first, we're going to start with the um, city council seats. Next, we're going to do inspector of election seats, and then we're going to do school board seats. So the way this is going to go is basically that um, I'll go kind of from the Ward 8 down to Ward 1, and I'll say nominations for City Council seat Ward 8 or so. Someone can raise their hand, and um, then I'll give like kind of a last second or third call 
Um, and then after that, um, if folks would like to, they can give kind of a, a speech and introduction to themselves or yeah, the floor will be there as basically after they're nominated or if there is some, um, if there are multiple people running for a seat, then, then they'll both have a chance to speak as well. Um, so to start off, like I said, we're gonna start with the city council seats. And the first one we'll do is ward eight. So are there any nominees for the ward eight city council seat? And I see Jane Stromberg raising her hand. Um, are there, sorry, uh, did you wanna say who you're nominating, Jane? Yes, please. Um, and then I'd like to just kind of say a few quick remarks, but I'd like to nominate Allie House for Ward 8 City Council. Great. Um, and then can I continue or did you yes. want to say something? Sure, go ahead, Jane. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I am officially and proudly nominating Allie House to be the progressive candidate for the Ward 8 seat on the Burlington City Council. Um, when I decided to step down from this role, I knew in my heart that the seat could not just be occupied by anyone if we want to continue making great strides of progress around real systemic issues people face day to day in the city. We need a leader that understands just how intertwined housing, classism, racism, public safety, and environmentalism really is. Um, and this understanding must also be from a place that is genuine and open-minded, compassionate, and, and full of empathy. Um, this is something that the world is very much starved of. This is why Ali's voice is a crucial and important one. In this fight against the climate crisis, in this collective moment towards an equitable future, in our movement as people and uh, you know, our progressive family and, and just everything that we know, right? Um, I think that there's been no better time to have a voice like Ali's on the council. Um, to, to grow and expand and learn deeply from within. And, and most of all, you focus on one of the greatest building blocks um, in politics and in organizing. Um, it, you know, trust is a huge, huge thing. And I trust Allie with everything that I've got. I could not be more proud of this incredible soul to come forward and be willing to serve in this capacity. The stakes have never been higher for working people and for the climate and and and, and, and like our just collective existence. Um, so I, I, I just want everyone here to know how much I believe in you, Allie. And I know that as people meet you and get to know you, they um, absolutely will too. Um, I am just so confident that you will be a positive addition to the council because of your moral compass, your diplomatic approach and your eagerness to be to, to be the change you literally want to see in the world. Um, there is only possibility when we raise voices like Allie's in our government. And you, know, you are just, you are so full of intention. I hear it in your voice. I see it in the work that you do in our community. And I feel wholeheartedly at ease that on March 1st, if elected, Ward 8 will be in the absolute best hands. Um, I'm just so proud of your candidacy and I'm very much hoping to be your constituent. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for running for office, for standing up for people and the planet. It is not easy, but if anyone can do it, it is you and it is time. Thank you, everyone. All right, great. Thank you so much, Jane, um, for that great nomination speech. Is Would anybody else like to nominate someone for the Ward 8 City Council seat? progressive nomination. Um, I'm seeing no hands. Uh, I guess last chance. Going once, going twice. And all right, the nomination goes to Ali House. Um, yeah, Ali, would you like to, to talk a little bit? The floor is all yours if you'd like to. Sure, thank you. Um, <laughs> Jane, thank you, thank you so much. That that means so much coming from you. 
um, especially. Yeah, so I, I really appreciate those kind words. Um, yeah, so, and thank you all for being here tonight, um, showing up and, and making this caucus happen. Um, that's awesome. And yeah, so as Jane mentioned, um, my name is Allie House. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a social worker, a public school educator, and also a student at UVM. Um, I uh, am seeking the nomination tonight for, for Ward 8. Um, and this, this journey really has been inspired um, by so many people, including um, many who are at this meeting. Um, so thank you all as well. Um, and I have to say, I felt really inspired and ready to go by the candidate forum the other night, hearing the thoughts and, and insights and ideas of um, my fellow progressive candidates. It was it was really an incredible experience. And so I'm really excited um, for all of us to get to work this election season. Um, yeah, so, so I want to take a moment um, just briefly to talk tonight about something that I don't think we talk often enough about, um, and that's hope. I think now more than ever, um, the hope of humanity is being tested. Um, and so many people I've talked to um, throughout this process have been brave enough to express their fears related to so many things, including climate, climate crisis, housing, public health. Um, there are just so many issues impacting our world right now. And um, I also resonate with, with many of these fears. Um, now is a really pivotal time uh, in world history and therefore in our, our city and community's history. Um, we as a state and as a municipality are on the brink of some really exciting and amazing change, especially as it relates to climate justice. Um, and now more than ever, I think we need leaders who are optimistic about our future and who are excited um, to fight to ensure that these changes happen and that they're decisive and rapid and equitable. Um, I have so much hope. I really believe in our city. I really believe that we, the people of Burlington, have the power to create this positive, lasting, impactful change. And I believe that we can serve as an example to other cities. And it starts in these small moments within our community and turning out um, to events like the one that we're at tonight, um, showing up, making our voices heard, holding each other up in collective care and um, refusing to let go of our hope, even in the face of so many systemic challenges. Um, our future is really, really bright, uh, <laughs> though hopefully that electricity comes from 100% renewable source and not fossil fuels. Um, and so I wanna express my, my deep gratitude to you all for, for showing up tonight and together we can do this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so, so much, Ali. So excited to have you as the nominee for Ward 8 um, City Council seat for the Progressive Party. Okay, um, so we are then going to move on to the Ward 7 seat. Are there any nominations for the Ward 7 City Council seat? And I'm seeing a hand from Meg P. Hello, everybody. It's Meg Feet. So awesome to see so many of you tonight. And I uh, just want to mention, as Ali House did, that the forum that was held on Sunday night was truly uplifting and just such a great way to like hear the common values that our candidates are bringing forth. If anyone didn't get a chance to watch it, I would highly recommend that. I am joining you tonight from Chili Ward 7 uh, to nominate Olivia Taylor as our candidate from Ward 7. And while I can't say that I've known Olivia for a long, long time, I am so inspired by her desire to run right now. And she's shown a commitment to public service already in our ward. Um, she's on our NPA, she's NPA steering committee member here and she's on the housing board. Um, so we know and she knows what it means to step up and step out into public service. And I think that she is ready, willing, and able to do this. Uh, I will say that I love her drive and not that she just wants to watch or listen or complain about what's going on, but to ask herself, why not me? Why not now? And to jump in. So that's super exciting. And you're gonna hear from her a little bit about the experiences and opportunities that are shaping her vision and her drive to be our Ward 7 candidate. So I am really, really excited to support her and um, really happy to nominate her as our Ward 7 candidate. 
All right, thank you, Meg. Um, would anybody else like to make another nomination for the Ward 7 City Council seat? All right, um, going once, going twice. Um, and yeah, I'm not seeing any hands there. So great, the floor is all yours, Olivia. Thank you so much. And thank you, Meg. Um, so since I seem like a very new face in Burlington politics, I do want to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Olivia Taylor. I use she, her pronouns. I live on Ethan Allen Parkway across from the Ethan Allen Park, and I'm running for a position of city councilor in Ward 7. I have rented, lived, worked, and studied in Burlington for almost 10 years, but in 2019, I moved to Ward 7. As Meg stated, I've joined the Wards 4 and 7 NPA Steering Committee, the Housing Board. I'm also on the Vermont State Tennis League and the Junior League of Champlain Valley, which manages the only diaper bank in all of Vermont. In addition to these activities, I walk dogs, care for cats, chickens, and ducks all over Chittenden County. I currently work at Residence, where we provide business development services to small businesses all over the world. This includes creating partnerships between governments, nonprofits, private businesses, training and recruiting staff, and coming up with creative ways to adapt during the pandemic. When I returned to Burlington after grad school, I was deeply disappointed by the absence of affordable housing. I was lucky enough to find a building in the new North End with a porch and a garden and off street parking, which is winning the lottery. <laughs> it was managed by a new American family who just recently became landlords. I'm excited to work with and be a part of the progressive party in Burlington. My first political experience in Vermont was actually interning for Representative Molly Burke, a progressive from Brattleboro. She and I bonded over our passions for transportation and combating climate change. And through her internship, I was hired as the energy and climate change intern at the Agency of Transportation. Since my time at UVM, I've continued to look up to and feel really supported by others in the Progressive Party, including Emma Mulvaney, Stanek, and Zariah Hightower, who have just been incredible people that I've been looking up to. For a long time, I have been very interested in politics, but I did not know where to start. This fall, I was accepted into Emily's List Ignite Change Fellowship, which was a nine-week virtual workshop to teach Democratic pro-choice women how to run for office. So that experience gave me the skills and the confidence to actually run, which is why I'm here today. As Ward 7 counselor, my goals are to increase access to affordable housing, build community and support local businesses. To increase access to affordable housing, I wanna advocate for tax credits for landlords who house long-term tenants, which will discourage unjust evictions while lessening the tax burden on property owners like my landlord. I will take action to streamline the rental application process in Burlington, which would make it easier to apply for rent and find tenants it could also prevent illegal rental applications and make rental applications easier to translate. To build community, I really want to create more inclusive parks ex through expanding the data-driven success of the Is Good program. I wanna add edible gardens to parks and create a specific off-leash trailed area for dogs to limit off-leash dogs in other parks. If that sounds really obscure to you, come to an NPA meeting in wards four and seven, and I promise that is very important. <laughs> to support local businesses, I would like to see Burlington employ a business development specialist that would provide free support to BIPOC and women-owned businesses. Throughout the pandemic, I've been amazed at the mutual aid groups that have really been working all over the city, and I really hope Burlington can use COVID relief money to support these community-led initiatives. Once again, my name is Olivia Taylor. I'm running for the city to be city councilor for Ward 7. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you all for being here. And I look forward to partnering with the Progressive Party. Thank you.
Great, thank you so, so much, Olivia. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to the Ward 6 City Council seat. Are there any nominations for the Ward 6 City Council seat? Um, not seeing any hands. Going once, going twice. All right. So we don't have any nominations for the ward. Six city council seat, we'll move on to the ward five city council seat. Are there any nominations for the ward five city council seat? Great, I'm seeing a hand from Andy. Um, let me take my hand down here. Um, hi, my name is Andy Simon. I use uh, he, him pronouns, and um, I live on uh, Locust Street in Ward 5. I've um, been involved with the Progressive Party for a long time, and um, have run uh, several uh, progressive city council campaigns, notably Charles Simpson campaign twice in Ward 6 and Ward 5 and 6, uh, the South District, um, and have supported a lot of um, uh, city council candidates in our, in our ward. Um, I'm happy to uh, nominate uh, Farid Menarcia for uh, the city council seat in Ward 5. I'm excited that he's running. And um, and uh, Farid did did me the great favor of uh, not asking me to nominate him until a couple of minutes ago, so I didn't have to worry about what I was going to say, and I won't go on for very long because I haven't prepared anything. But it's easy to talk about uh, Farid's uh, sterling qualities. Uh, I'm assuming that most of you already know him because Farid is everywhere in. Uh, in um, many different struggles across the city. Uh, you certainly know him from um, eating the wonderful food of the People's Kitchen that he organized and runs uh, and, uh, and is, People's Kitchen has been absolutely everywhere uh, in any event, in any struggle, in any um, uh, demonstration, uh, you can count on that food being there and being good. And that is re a real testament to Farid's uh, tenacity, his hard work, and, um, and his absolutely uh, wonderful values uh, in terms of uh, where he chooses to put his energy. Farid also was instrumental in the struggle to um, uh, protect the Sears Lane encampment and uh, was fierce in his defense of that, uh, of that community um, and continues to support and stay in touch with the people who, uh, who live there. Uh, Farid uh, ran the kitchen, among other things, ran the kitchen and uh, provided meals at Sears Lane in the, the worst of times, in the worst of weather and um, was uh, a, a bulwark of that, that struggle. Uh, Farid's work at the Worker Center um, has been uh, years long and uh, is, uh, has been, always been important to the Burlington community and to working people in Burlington. Um, and uh, he is a, uh, a uniquely interesting and uh, funny and um, serious and um, delightful person. I am glad to nominate Farid for city council in Ward 5. All right, thank you so, so much, Andy, um, for that nomination speech. Um, would anybody else like to make a nomination for the Ward 5 city council seat? Not seeing any hands, going once, 
going twice. Um, okay, not seeing any other nominations. Uh, Freed, would you like to make a speech? Uh, thank you, and thanks, Andy. Uh, for all his pronouncements about the situation in Sears Lane and his assurances about how homeless folks there were being taken care of, Mayor Weinberger never once visited the camp, not once. Yet decisions were made, policies were carried out, an agenda set with repercussions that impact not only the lives of the unhoused folk res uh, camp residents, but also pitted neighbors against each other, transformed public safety for the worst, and exposed our true character as a community. Sears Lane laid bare the contradictions between the values Burlington claims to share as a community against the reality of how decisions are actually made, by whom those decisions are made, and at whose expense just like Burlington Telecom or Memorial Auditorium or the Downtown Improvement District, like City Hall Park and that huge gaping hall in the heart of our city. In democratic societies, policies reflect the values of the population and Burlington is a city with decidedly progressive values. That same election that put our administration in power, our voters also overwhelmingly support economic policies that prioritizes the need of the 99% over the interest of the 1%. And we supported that by 77 to 23% margin. And we overwhelmingly affirmed that corporations are not people by 80% to 20%. More recently, through the work of the good people here, we can show that our voting population support raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, uh, support more affordable housing and just cause eviction. Something is really wrong in the way decisions are made. I mean, we are a city that is progressive. We are a population that support all this great change, but somehow our decision-making mechanism has not resulted in uh, the results that we would expect from having these values that we all share. I, uh, my name is Fareed. Uh, I live, I've lived in Ward 5 for most of my life, uh, adjacent to the Sears Lane encampment. Uh, I'm here for Sears Lane. I'm here for my neighbors. I'm here for South Meadows. Uh, I'm here for the South End and for the community. Um, I'm a volunteer with the Proposition Zero project and it is an um, electoral effort to change how decisions are made in the city. As we all learn uh, through like the police accountability measure, which uh, will be talked about, I think at the, towards the end of the session uh, and others um, keep the park green, uh, F-35, city council alone is not enough. We need people to be organized and we need people to be mobilized and we need people to have our power enshrined in our city charter. And that is the human right to participate in all the decisions that impact our lives. I'm not running for the council seat. I'm here for um, direct democracy. Uh, I will be uh, putting my name in with the electoral uh, commission, but I want your signatures. Please uh, support our efforts. Uh, I think there will be a presentation afterward. Uh, so please stick around on how to get involved with Proposition Zero and the people for police accountability. Um, and we, I, th I believe we are ready for a more participatory democracy or grassroots decision-making process where our numbers matter and our voices matter, where we matter. We believe that we can have uh, and can pass progressive policies through the ballot, regardless of which candidates win and which political party is in power. So please uh, join our effort uh, this uh, town meeting day. My name is Fareed uh, and I'm here with Proposition Zero. Uh, let's bring back uh, power to the people. Thank you. Okay, thank you so, so much, Fareed. Um, we're now gonna move on to the Ward 4 City Council seat nomination. So would anybody like to make a nomination for the Ward 4 City Council seat? Not seeing any hands. Um, going once, going twice. 
Okay. Um, we'll then move on to the Ward 3 City Council seat. Or, uh, unless, sorry. Barb, was that for the Ward 3 or, or for the Ward 4? Ward 3, okay. Great, so, sweet. Go ahead, Barb. Oh, I'm sorry, you're muted right now. Now, I, I'm still Barb Prine, no longer muted. Um, I'm a longtime progressive. I've, I've been an active in progressive policies for 40 years, and it's nice to see so many former city councilors on the call. Shout out to all of them. Um, I, I'm here to nominate Joe McGee. How lucky have we been? to have him for these past months and how he has been shot into the progressive policies. Like this, we have seen what he's done and we are ready to put him back there. He has been active for homeless and houseless people at Sears Lane. And he got the wonks together to come up and formulate a tremendous policy on help for homeowners with this disastrous property tax reform. Um, you know, he's been clear advocate for mental health and substance abuse. And he also brings to that his own like family experience with police. You know, he is such a nuanced, kind, thoughtful person. I am I met him on Bernie campaigns and I just can't tell you how grateful I am that, you know, when we lost Brian Pine, which was rough to get Joe McGee is hope. I, I really appreciated the, the talk about hope. I feel like there's a lot of hope with Joe McGee and I'm so proud to um, get to nominate him. Great, thanks so much, Barb. Are there any other nominations for the Ward 3 seat? Going once, going twice. All right, I'm not seeing any hands. So Joe, if you'd like to make a speech, the floor is, the floor is all yours. Thanks, David. And thank you, Barb, for that uh, nomination speech. Uh, it's really been such an honor to have you as a mentor and a friend over the last many years and uh, to have your support uh, in this election as well. Um, I'm also really glad to be sharing space with you all, so many friends uh, on the screen. I wish we could be in person, but uh, you know we're, we're doing what we can with what we have. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe McGee. I use he and they pronouns, and I'm currently the Ward 3 City Councilor representing downtown and the Western part of the Old North End. Uh, I am running for a full term on the City Council to continue the important work we've done over the last four months. Uh, and really expand our efforts to bring harm reduction and trauma-informed practice into our policymaking process. Um, and, you know, in thinking about that, I really need to start my speech um, talking about Sears Lane because um, I'll be honest, until uh, uh, we got involved uh, working with campers and advocates, uh, I wasn't really sure that I was going to run for re-election. Um, I wasn't feeling very connected to the work. And um, that entire experience from mid-October to December and to now, um, as we sort of try to figure out where we go um, from the disastrous city action that was taken to displace our, our houseless neighbors uh, in the coldest months of the year and um, ultimately destroy people's homes in December. You know, I, um, I just, that made it clear to me that uh, I needed to, I need to step up and do this again. So um, I am glad to be here in that work. I'm looking forward to in the next few weeks, introducing uh, a new city ordinance that would codify a camping policy that uh, centers um, protections for campers and uh, outlines city actions that uh, will take place to make sure that we're really focusing on meeting the basic needs of 
the most vulnerable folks in our community. Um, you know, some other things that I've been proud to work on, like Barb said, the citywide reappraisal was really uh, terribly impactful for so many homeowners. And uh, we saw a real burden shift away from commercial property uh, owners in that reappraisal. And so I'm glad that we're gonna be starting this process to uh, look at our citywide reappraisal and also our property tax system to see if that is something that really uh, works for the people that live here. And in having this conversation, we're really gonna um, start to address the issues that we have around affordability in Burlington. Um, I've also opposed increases to police resources without um, stepping forward on the reforms that we've all agreed as a city that we need to move forward on. Um, so I'm gonna continue to push for the administration to release the RFP on a CAHOOTS type model that will put uh, mental health care workers and uh, uh, medical professionals in the field to respond to those calls because that's an urgent need that we have. Um, and I'm also very supportive of uh, community control of police and the organizing efforts that are going around to uh, get a, an independent control board. I think that's an important step that we need to take as a city. Um, and I was also really proud to stand with our union siblings in supporting the responsible contractor ordinance uh, recently to ensure that workers on city projects are getting paid a living wage and have safe working conditions. And so, you know, going forward, we need to make sure that um, when we're addressing the climate crisis, that we're having a just transition there, that we are uh, bringing our infrastructure into the 21st century and uh, upgrading our electrical grid and making sure that our infrastructure works for everybody. So that's fare free transportation, buses that are so convenient that it doesn't make sense to get in your car and, uh, and more accessible bike lanes. And so I'm looking forward to doing all of this work, uh, investing in uh, the work, the great equity work that Taisha Green and the REIB office have been doing and uh, continuing to really push for harm reduction and trauma-informed practice and in our policy making. And so I'm looking forward to doing that work with this strong slate of progressive candidates that we have uh, here tonight and uh, going into March 1st. So thank you all very much. All right, thanks so, so much, Joe. Um, we're now gonna move on to the Ward 2 City Council seat. So would anybody like to make a nomination for the Ward 2 City Council seat? Um, and I am seeing a hand from Terrell. Sorry, you can go ahead if you'd like to. Um, but you are muted right now. Right there, I got it. Okay, hi, uh, Terry Bricius. Um, the Progressive Party is all about looking forward, but uh, there's some value in also looking backwards. Uh, and uh, I don't want to say Gene Bergman is looking backwards, but institutional memory is very valuable. Uh, when I was first elected to city council 41 years ago, <laughs> Bernie Sanders, um, it was it was pretty stunning that we up, upset and defeated incumbent Democrats to create this revolution. First, openly socialist candidates elected almost anywhere in the United States. Gene Bergman joined us a few short years later. I think he came on to city council 36 years ago. Um, and he went on to become a lawyer and uh, then served as a city attorney, which means he has all kinds of inside knowledge about the workings of city government, how it works badly, how it works well, how opportunities and things that can be done. Um, Obviously, many of the issues that he's going to want to address, issues of war and peace, issues of uh, climate change, of work, the rights of working people and of tenants, uh, are, are, have to be addressed on a, on a national or even global level. But there are things that can be done locally, and Gene is very good at taking them local. I first met Gene when he was working on a rent control campaign 43 years ago uh, with the people acting for change together. He's, he's very committed, very hardworking. Uh, he, he's, I'm so thrilled when I heard that he was willing to step up and, and, and take Tracy, Max Tracy's seat. Um, I'll, I'll stop there. I just, I'll just say the kinds of things that we need to deal with, obviously, are, are obviously climate change, but things like the F-35 overflights, uh, getting rid of them from the airport. There's a, there's a ton of issues that I hope that Gene and all of us will be working on. 
Um, I'll stop there because uh, I've gone on too long already. Oh, Gene Bergman, I'm, I'm, I'm endorsing. I'm asking us to endorse Gene Bergman. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, Terry. Um, would anybody else like to make a nomination for the Ward 2 City Council seat? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands going once, going twice. All right, if Jean is here, the floor is all yours, Jean. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, David, and uh, thanks, Terry. You know, I, I think you've shown that the arc of the moral universe here in Burlington has been real long, but as Dr. King taught, it's bent towards justice, not smoothly and nonstop, of course, but I want to, in that regard, I, it's really important for me to thank you, Max. I know you're not here right now, but let me just say that. Thank you, Max Tracy, for helping us navigate through some hard years, starting when you won a decade ago. You led when it was lonely, and I've been calling folks for this caucus, and many have shared how glad they are that you're their, their counselor. You listened to them, you fought for their needs, for their values, and a common hope for a better Burlington. So I just want to right now add my voice to their voices and saying thank you, Max. Thank you. Now, why should I run for Max's seat? Well, my spouse and partner, Wendy Coe, says it's because my record as a city councilor and a city attorney show that I know how this, this government works and how it can be better and that I can help other people learn and do the same. And I just want to say that it has been a joy to work with uh, current progressive city councilors uh, to help them do uh, a lot of amazingly good and important work that they've done over the last three years. Now, other people have said that I should run because since retiring in, 19, in 2018, I've worked to stand up to injustice. And, you know, truth be told, that's why I work with community organizers on the Independent Police Discipline Board that got, count, that got vetoed by the mayor and that we're continuing to work on. And uh, Tyler has posted something on that. Farida talked about it. The fair and, par and impartial policing policy that the Nomas Palimira um, folks uh, pushed through and that we adopted, and stopping the privatization of the Church Street Marketplace, something that was just really a smack in all of our faces. And it's really why I walked the church, the, the nurses' picket lines, and helped organize community support. Some other friends have told me that I can be a bridge between the past and the present, and Terry has sort of a, alluded uh, to that. And so I agree that these are all good things to run on and to hopefully serving on. You know, we have done really good work on housing, but clearly, clearly it is not enough. That's why I've been working with Joe and with activists and other counselors on the new encampment policy so that that Sears Lane debacle will not be repeated. And I am really excited, really excited to join with all of you to help UVM push to build enough housing to really break the back of this housing crisis. We've done good work on climate change and the environment, but it is clearly not enough. That's why I'm working with organizers and community, the community and city councilors to stop the airport's further expansion into the Chamberlain School neighborhood and decrease aviation emissions. You know, that, that neighborhood has been savaged by the F-35s and we want to expand into it further. That is just outrageous. Enough is enough. And we have done some good work on progressive economics, including alternatives to the property tax. But as we've heard tonight from others, you know, that is clearly not enough. It's as obvious as the nose on my face. Reappra the appraisal, reappraisal debacle shows that. So I could go on, but let me leave you with these thoughts. One, we are not alone. We have progressive counselors and candidates and movements who are willing to challenge the system and push, push for transformational change. 
we are willing to see things that are and dream things that never were and say, as Bobby Kennedy said, why not? That, my friends, is hard work. The system is not going to change on its own, but it's essential that we change it if we're going to keep this planet habitable for our babies and for most other life. It's essential to change it if we're going to bring justice to our world. I want to end by actually quoting Noam Chomsky. Noam says, the smart way to keep people passive and obedient is to strictly limit the spectrum of acceptable opinion, but to allow a very lively debate within that spectrum, even encourage the more critical and dissident views. People feel that there's free thinking going on, but you know what? All the while, the system's values are being reinforced by the limits put on the range of the debate. I think that Chomsky would be proud of our progressives, proud of our movement. I am, and it, will be, it would be such an honor to serve with them, with all of you, to try to stretch the limits, try to bring values of solidarity and empathy, justice and equity into reality. And with your help over the next night, We'll be we can begin. So thank you and venceremos. All right, thank you so so much, Gene. Um, now we're going to move on to the Ward One City Council seat. So would anyone like to make a nomination for the Ward One City Council seat? Carol Green has her hand up, David, her physical hand up. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I don't know if she might not be oh. on the home screen. Right. All right. Thanks okay. so much, Meg. Yeah. Floor is all yours, Cheryl. Thanks. Hi. So my name is Cheryl Green. I live in Burlington Co. Housing on East Avenue in Ward 1. And I am honored to nominate Soraya Hightower as our Ward 1 progressive candidate for the Burlington City Council. So I met Zoraya two years ago. She came to co-housing to speak to us because she had recently decided to run for this position. And I knew within an hour of talking with her, listening, asking questions, that I wanted to work on her campaign. I appreciate Zoraya's capacity to listen deeply to her constituents, to research the issues at hand, and I've watched her in engage productively with all of her colleagues on the council and make her decisions carefully. I have um, full confidence in Zariah. I know she will continue this important work and that she will do it responsibly. I was so moved by Zariah's process to bring the racial justice resolution forward, listening, coordinating, risking and evaluating the merits over time. And she's also been a leader on public safety issues. And just recently on this weekend's Progressive Candidate Forward Forum, she put forward the issue of mental health, how clinics are needed to help so many people who are struggling at this time. And she also openly expressed her enthusiasm about working with this new slate of candidates. Um, Soraya is authentic through and through. I place Soraya Hightower in nomination for city councilor from Ward 1. Great. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Would anybody else like to make a nomination for the Ward 1 city council seat? Nice job. Going once, going twice. All right. Um, Israel is here. The floor is all yours. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for that, Cheryl. Um, I'm Zariah Hightower. She, her, running for re-election in Ward 1. Um, yeah, two years ago, I was still new to the Progressive Party, and um, there were lots of folks who really welcomed me, like Cheryl and Barb and Jack and others. 
Um, but it was also really difficult. And I remember I walked into the Progressive Caucus and I didn't know what was going to happen if I would get the endorsement or if I would drop out of the race, um, not having got the nomination. And man, what a difference two years makes. <laughs> I really feel walking into this caucus feels so different. And I really feel like I'm a representative of so many things that the party stands for. And I really feel like I have you all as a party behind me. Um, a lot of you know that I stepped up pretty early to make some big changes on city council um, once I got elected, both I think especially on public safety transformation and then on um, housing, things like just cause eviction, and then um, more recently short-term rentals. And it was really, I think especially after the murder of George Floyd, it was both very overwhelming to be in that position, but it was also empowering to be able to act in a way that was really meaningful to me at the time and to continue to do that, especially um, on public safety and on housing issues. And all that said, I know lots of you know, this is a di difficult decision for me to run for reelection and I'm not sure I'll be in Burlington politics for forever, but I do feel like I'm, really excited to continue to be a leader in the Progressive Caucus for the next two years. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes in my time on council and I can only hope to not repeat some of them in my second terms. And if 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 I get reelected, um, I'm gonna miss Jane and Max regardless, but I'm, I'm excited about the possibility of our slate of candidates. Um, Ali, Olivia, Fareed, Joe, and Jean this year. I think we're all incredibly different. And I think that's actually really, really exciting to see um, for the Progressive Party slate. So just wanna applaud how different we all are. And I think that, oh my gosh, if we were all to get elected, what a, <laughs> what a great slate that would be. Um, and I, Think that no matter what happens, I'm just excited that I'm a progressive and that I will continue to be part of this party no matter what. Um, and that, you know, maybe we're the largest third party, but I think we're also going to be the most grassroots and certainly a really diverse party in the years to come. And I'm excited to help build that. And thank you all for two years and hopefully here's to another two. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you so, so much, Zariah. Um, yeah, I'm so, so incredibly excited about our wonderful slate of, of candidates this year um, for city council seats. Um, so now we're going to move on to the inspector of election seats. And this is kind of going to be the same basic structure, but instead of somebody else nominating someone, uh, these seats are self-nominated. And we're only going to give about one minute for folks to talk. We just want to keep this a bit quicker. Uh, but before we jump into that, I am going to pass it over to Carter, who's going to give a quick plug for why y'all should consider running um, for inspector of elections. Well, thank you, David. I'm super inspired by that slate of candidates and really excited to, to work really hard um, in the coming weeks to make sure that those folks win. Um, Wendy Co. I've had many conversations with you and you could probably, if anybody needs a lesson on why inspector and ward clerk positions are so crucial to our city, um, I encourage you to call Wendy Co. Um, because I've heard a lot of stories as a young person getting involved in the party and the obstacles that our coalition has faced over the years um, in just having access to free and fair elections and inspectors play a really critical role um, so I really encourage folks, you know, if you've thought about running, it's a, it's a great way to participate in our democracy. It's, it's a nonpartisan way to participate in our democracy. Um, and it's, you know, really crucial. It's the bedrock of everything we do. Um, we believe in the democratic process as a party and um, hold that really dear. And so I think I always really value when folks step up for inspector and, and encourage folks to, to do that if there's not a strong progressive running in your ward. And I'll, with that, pass it back to David. Sweet. Thanks so much, Carter. Um, all right. So we can get started then with, with these um, nominations. So we'll start again with Ward 8. Um, so please raise your hand if you'd like to nominate yourself for the Ward 8 um, City Council Inspector of Elections. Uh, oh, Joshua is saying that it has three open seats.
Oh, I'm seeing a hand from Adam Franz. Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry, I'm not picking up any audio right now. It does say that you're unmuted, but I'm not sure if the microphone is working. Does it work? Yeah, try now. Can, can you hear you it? Work? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Now. Great. Yes, I would like to run for inspector of elections for uh, the board eight. Um, I'll be very proud to be running alongside this, the slate of progressives for the city council and all the other uh, inspectors of election. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you so, so much, Adam. Um, would anybody else like to um, self-nominate for this seat? Or not for this seat, but for oh, um, one of the three Ward 8 um, inspector of election seats. Sorry. Um, go in once. Going twice. All right. I'm not seeing any other hands. So we're going to move on to Ward 7. Um, would anybody like to run for Ward 7 inspector election seats um, to self nominate? Um, not seeing any hands. Um, feel free to drop in the chat if I'm missing, if somebody does drop um, a hand or, or to speak up, but going once, going twice. All right. Um, so then we'll move on to Ward 6. So would anyone like to self-nominate for um, Ward 6 inspector of election seat? Okay. Oh, well, I just saw in the chat, Jim noted, Trish O'Kane would like to run for Ward 7 election inspector. Great. Thank you, Jim. Um, if, if Trish is, is Trish here? And if, if so, would, would they like to make a quick speech? Um, and if not, yeah, thank you for, for letting us know, Jim. And um, we'll move on to, I guess, Ward 5. Um, so would anybody like to, so I think Trish is with Jim. Oh, okay. Uh, feel free to speak up if you'd like to, to Trish, uh, to make a quick, a quick speech, if you'd like to. No. Can you hear me now, David? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, I can great. You. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Hi, my name is Trish O'Kane. I live in Ward 7. Um, I teach environmental studies at University of Vermont, and I've monitored elections in Central America and Madison, Wisconsin. I would love to serve my community more and learn how to inspect elections here um, in Burlington. Thank you. Great, thank you so, so much, Trish. You're welcome. Okay, um, so I think we're on Ward 5 now. Thanks. Or so would anybody like to run for Ward 5, Inspector of Elections? Um, going once, going twice. All right. Um, we'll move on to Ward 4. Would anybody like to self-nominate for Ward 4, Inspector of Elections? Um, going once, going twice. Um, all right. Again, feel free to, to drop in the chat if, if I'm, if I miss someone, I'm just looking at the, the hands right now, but, um, if someone, if I'm missing someone or if someone's unable to raise a hand. 
definitely feel free to let me know. Um, I saw that Kit says um, that the open seat is held by Democrats, so I can skip over War Three. Uh, I guess I haven't totally gotten verification of that. Is is there anybody who would like to run for Ward th for the War Three Inspector of Elections? So um, guess, sorry, yeah, let me just explain that really quickly because this okay, is this is kind of yeah, it's it's complicated. Um, so essentially, um, essentially, because of you know, this is this is a, a job where you're inspecting the the election. So you're a poll worker. You can't have one party hold all the seats. So in Ward Three and in Ward Two, um, out of the three inspector elect of elections, we currently have two progressives elected to those seats. So someone could run for the third seat, but they would have to. They would not be able to serve. Um, so essentially, if they ran and won, they would have to decline. So you could you could appear on the ballot, and it's you know a good opportunity for someone who maybe wants to get their their name on the ballot. Um, maybe you want to run for higher office or something at some point. Um, so you could still be nominated. You just won't won't be allowed to serve if you win. Okay. Thank you so so much for that clarification, Josh. That was really helpful. Um, so I guess I will uh, quickly ask for, for both of those words, if, if anybody would like to um, run for that third inspector of election seat for, um, I guess I'll do them both at the same time for either War 3 or War 2. Would anybody like to run for either of those, those third seats? Um, um, David, yeah. I, I'm the War Ward clerk and in Ward Two, and um, I I'm, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to ask the party's endorsement of Solvay Overby. She runs as an independent, but she's fantastic. And uh, as Josh explained, because we have to have a balance, we can't have all progressives. Um, I just want people to know that we have great support in so Solvay. Uh, and she's been doing it for a while, so she's running for re-election. And so it's not exactly a nomination. It's just asking for the party's endorsement for her. But if that's too difficult, we don't need to do that. I just wanted to tell everybody what a great person she is. Okay, bye. Okay, thanks so much, Wendy. Yeah, I'm seeing Josh says we can do that. Do, do you want to say anything else on that, Josh, or should I move on to... The ward one inspector of elections now um yeah no i would just say that that's perfectly allowed um you can you can run and seek our nomination and then um you run as an independent so that's perfectly allowable okay sounds great um so we'll move on now to the ward one inspector of election seat so See, so would anyone like to self-nominate for Ward 1, Inspector of Elections? Um, and I'm not seeing any hands, so I guess we'll do final call. Going once, going twice. And all right. Um, so I guess we can move on now. Um, so our next stage of the caucus is we're going to go over um, nominations for the um, school board seats. So it'll be the same basic process um, for school board seats. I Are these ones, sorry, are, are these ones self-nominated or, or are they going to have a Josh. Um, yeah, these, these are also self nominated. And, you know, for background, we historically haven't endorsed uh, many candidates for school board. And we should give a shout out to Adam Haji, um, who is one of the few candidates we've ever endorsed for school board. And he's stepping down in Ward 8 this cycle. Um, but we typically we do put it on because occasionally there is a candidate. It's a nonpartisan position, but occasionally there'll be a candidate who like really wants our endorsement and support for those positions. So we, we do have that on the agenda. Um, and if someone, it, you know, if there are folks out there who really want the endorsement for school board, 
from the party, even though it is a nonpartisan position, that is something we can consider. Okay. Um, so should I should I run through the wards in the same way, or, or would it be most helpful just to ask for all the wards if there's if there's anyone? Um, I don't know. Would it be most helpful, do you think, to to go through them one by one? Um, or maybe just let's maybe just ask if there's anyone who. Okay. Yeah, for the whole city. Sounds good. Yeah. Is there anyone? So yeah, if anyone is interested in seeking the um, Progressive Party nomination for a school board seat, definitely feel free to raise your hand or drop in the chat or, or speak up. All right, going once, going twice. Yeah, I'm not seeing, not seeing anyone. Uh, that's totally okay. Um, but now we're gonna move on to some movement updates uh, from some local activists who are gonna talk to us about um, two really important pieces of. Um, piece of policy that there's been a lot of action around trying to pass um, at the council, um, community control of police and Proposition Zero. Um, so I guess without further ado, I will pass it off to Tyler, Daniel, and Liam um, in whatever form that they would like to speak about um, those two campaigns that have been going on. Thanks, David. Um, hey, folks. Thanks for the time tonight. Um, my name is Tyler. He or they pronouns. I live in Ward 8. Uh, I'm here with Dan and Liam tonight to ask for your help and support in gathering signatures for two people-powered charter change initiatives that Fareed and Jean have both mentioned, Community Control of Police and Proposition Zero. Both of these proposed changes are fundamentally about democracy and putting power directly in the hands of the people. Um, a very brief rundown of community control of police. Uh, as of right now, the Burlington City Charter, which you can think of as basically our city constitution, grants the chief of police sole disciplinary authority over Burlington police officers. No other person in the city has any direct authority in officer misconduct. This is why, despite video evidence of violent patterns and unprecedented public demand for their removal, Burlington has been unable to remove officers Joseph Coro and Corey Campbell from the department. These failures of accountability have brought attention to the reality that our police department investigates its own misconduct. This is a fundamental conflict of interest and the opposite of accountability. In order to change this, we have to change the city charter. This means a citywide vote and then approval by the state. To get on the ballot, a proposal must pass through city council or a petition with signatures from 5% of registered voters. Thanks to progressive councilors, a version of this proposal did pass city council in 2020, but was then vetoed by the mayor. So petition it is, and around 2000 signatures are needed. So what's in the proposal? The creation of an independent board of Burlington residents with investigatory and disciplinary powers in matters of police misconduct. The board is built around transparency and representation of people historically harmed or underserved by police. Though the history of this proposal has been frustrating at times, it's had a lot of time to mature. If you're already familiar with it, there are a few small but critical refinements being finalized that will make it a lot more robust as it is presented to voters and the state. Please come to our next info sessions to hear more about this. I'll give dates in a minute. There should also be a link in the chat to peopleforpoliceaccountability.com, which has lots of great info and will be updated with proposal changes soon. Uh, now Dan and Liam are going to give a quick summary of Proposition Zero, and then I'll wrap it up with our asks and next steps. I think Dan needs to be unmuted. There we go. Hey, sorry about that. Um, I'm Dan. I live in Ward 3. I've lived in Burlington for two years, and I quickly realized that I really love this city, 
Um, but I found out what I loved most was all of the resonance and all of the interacting communities that make it up. Um, in, you know, but also Burlington, like most every other municipality in the country has a problem. And that's that decision-making power lays in the hand of the few um, and to the detriment of everyone else. What Proposition Zero seeks to do is to give power back to the people by changing the city charter to guarantee the right to citizens' initiatives and referenda. In much the same way that the Vermont Constitution guarantees the right to petition proposed charter changes to be placed on the ballot, with Proposition Zero, citizens can petition the municipality to adopt changes to city ordinance or repeal an ordinance that had recently, be, had recently been acted on by council. There's nothing radical to this. The Winooski City Charter already guarantees this right to its citizens, and Vermont has a long history of this exact type of direct participatory democracy going back to its founding and its tradition of open town meetings. Hi, uh, I'm, hi, I'm Liam. Uh, so Proposition Zero is a petition to, say, to change the city charter forever. In effect, it will follow the example of Winooski and restore democracy in Burlington, which has withered terribly over time. Uh, we've seen the consequences of this decline in democracy, especially within the past decades, the sale of Burlington Telecom, the outrageous veto power given to the mayor has been used to quash several urgent popular movements, including the F-35, Keep Parks Green, Police Accountability, and recently the city's controversial destruction of Sears Lane and its residence, a violent mark on the city's history. Frankly, this is something that the city should already have and something our neighbors are surprised to learn isn't within our power. Uh, go to propositionzero.org to learn more and get involved with the volunteer effort. It's time to make the progressive party the party of the people by making it the party of direct democracy. This is how the prods will draw a distinction between themselves and the speculative investment Democrats. Thanks, Dan and Liam. Um, so what's the ask? Uh, for anyone on this call, join us in talking to our neighbors and collecting signatures. We're aiming to get these items on the November 2022 ballot or possibly next March. Town meeting day this year will be a huge opportunity to have these conversations and we need lots of help to do that. For candidates, we have sample blurbs for you to add into your campaign literature or website should you decide to partner with us on our causes. So next steps, we're pasting a stay in touch and get involved form in the chat and we'll have evening follow-up info sessions this Thursday and next Wednesday. So please fill out that form with your info and come say hi. Thanks everyone. All right, thank you so, so much, Tyler, Daniel, and Liam um, for giving us such a thorough rundown on those policies and for all of your work. Yeah, if folks are able to, to get involved um, with either of those campaigns or, or sign the, the petitions that are going around, um, that's incredibly helpful and useful. Um, so yeah, thank you all three and everyone else who's been working so hard on those um, pivotal campaigns. Um, so next up, we're gonna move on to talk about how you can vote um in these elections um for all of the um seats that we've just been doing nominations for so i'm going to pass it over to josh ronsky to speak on that thanks david this has been like an awesome process in a ways just so impressed by the group of people that come together to you know seek our nomination and who actually want to like run for office this is great um so you know if you participated in the mayoral forum last um, last cycle, this will be very, very familiar to you. Um, we're, as soon as this is finished, um, I'm going to be finalizing the list and folks will receive an electronic ballot from OPA vote. And I'm just going to share my screen quickly um, to hopefully give you a taste of what that actually looks like. So this is, um, this is what the, the actual email is going to look like. Um, so it'll come from OPA vote. It won't come from like an appprogressiveparty.org email. It'll come from OPA vote directly. So keep an eye out. Um, we'll also be texting and calling and emailing folks to make sure they got their ballot. 
Um, so you get this email, you hit the blue vote button right there. And then that should take you to, um, to a screen with your actual ballot. So um, for our process, we always include no endorsement on the ballot. So none of these races are competitive at this point because there were no multiple candidate nominations. So um, for each race, this is what the Ward 3-1 will look like. Um, you get to check either Joe McGee or no endorsement. And an endorsement, a, a nomination um, or an endorsement requires a majority of those voting um, in each ward. So each one of these nominations is going to be decided by the specific group of people who registered for um, for that ward. So it's not a citywide vote. Um, I'm just going to stop the share, stop the screen share. Um, so once you get your ballot um, in the email, either later tonight or early tomorrow morning, depending on how quickly we can get, get this out, um, you'll have until 12 p.m. on Thursday the 20th to actually cast your ballot. So that's that's going to be your last opportunity to to vote. And at that point, we will um, we will um, tabulate the the results and we'll announce. Um, there are also two options for in person voting. Um, this is an equity issue. We don't want to make it so that you have to own a computer or you know speak English to participate. So we did want to include in-person voting options as well. If you're participating on this forum, um, then you should be registered and you should receive an electronic ballot. But if you are aware of anyone who would like to participate, who is not on, um, who's not able to participate electronically or didn't register, um, there are two times. The first is gonna be tomorrow night um, from 5.30 to 7.30 PM at our office in the soda plant, um, in the soda plant. And then the, Final option is going to be um, on Thursday from 8:30 to 10:30, also at our office in the Soda Plant. So people can come on by if they're. We'll have voter registration forms if they're not registered. Um, so people can register and vote at that point. Um, yes, send folks on by. That's that's totally fine and and good. And then we'll have the um, we'll have the results available shortly after 12 p.m. on the 20th. So. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks, thanks to um, David and Gil and Annie, our, our co-chairs um, and all the candidates and Carter Newbeezer, who did a lot of work as the chair of our elections committee, um, you know, making calls and making sure we had a good slate. I think this is a really great process and I look forward to getting to work with all of you. Sweet, thank you so much, Josh. Um for giving that rundown. Yeah, make sure to vote folks, um, get your votes in. Uh, I guess with that, that's about the last thing. So we can wrap up now. Thank you so much again for, for everybody who came, who listened, um, who's involved in this, in this um, political process, who's getting involved with the Progressive Party, interested in um, putting whatever effort you're able to into creating progressive change in our city and really building a bottom up um, working class um movement fighting um fighting for the vo most vulnerable people in our communities um yeah and thank you so much to everybody who contributed to this meeting especially and um especially all the candidates everyone who gave nominations um for our candidates thank you again to tyler daniel and liam for speaking on um those two um key policy campaigns and with that um unless anyone has anything else to say i think we can wrap on up but Thanks again, everyone. I'm super excited to work together with you all more going forward. Josh, can you unmute the people whose hands are up or Chloe? Yes. There's folks in the corner that have things to say. Thank you. I want to ask. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I had a quick question. It was a $10 charge on that electronic ballot. What's what is that all about? So that, that's that's on our end. We have to pay. What you're probably seeing is just we were paying. We have to pay to actually use the service. So no one no one is going to get charged to vote. I promise you that. <laughs> do you have to? Do we have to, as an organization, pay ten dollars for every ballot cast? Or? No, no, no. It's like the it's okay. like the total. It's, okay. it's 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 very affordable. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think Erhard had his hand up as well. Hey, uh, folks, great caucus. Uh, I just wanted to amplify Barb Prine's question in the chat, which is, uh, I didn't hear uh, whether all the candidates were uh, running uh, to uh, running with a P next to their name on the ballot. Yeah, so I think, so Zariah, I know, I know that most are, I'm not sure, um, and maybe candidates can just chime in um because i know i'm not sure so it, it is possible and people sometimes do run with the p support but then they run as an i as well and that's um um yeah so olivia is saying is going to run as an i it looks like and then i think farid is running as an i although i don't want to I don't want to speak for him <laughs> but we told i mean we totally support that um you know, that's what Bernie's been doing his entire career. And he's really in many ways, the founder of the party. So long history of that. Uh, thanks for that. Just uh, understand the strategic considerations. Just wanted to know. Great. Well, thanks for those questions. Does anyone else have any other final questions or comments that they want answered before we wrap up? Um, oh, it's Barb Prine. Go ahead. I I was just hoping that we'd get an answer from all the candidates, and I don't okay. think we've gotten an answer from all of them yet. So if we could just wait until, and if 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 Farid can answer, and if anyone else who hasn't answered yet could answer, that'd be great. I I don't think Farid's on right now. I think he probably hopped off, but um, he got in really late, and we can. Yeah, maybe send that to folks. But my understanding is he was going to run as an I. Um, so I'm sure he would tell you himself if he was if he was on at this point. <laughs> so Josh, if I because I'm in Ward Six, mm -hmm. it, I won't get a ballot from you. No, you you will get a ballot. Yes, I will. But there won't yeah. be anything to vote on. Well, there'll be. I think there's an inspector candidate in Ward Six. Okay. So. You get to, you get to vote on the inspector inspector of election okay. for Ward Six unopposed. All right. So, Thank you. Unless do you want do you want to throw your name in, Connie? Do you want to run for city council? Yeah, I think it might be a little hard, especially if we go off Zoom. Okay. Thank you though. Great. Yeah, I think we. Oh, sorry. Um, Barb, is that a, is that a legacy hand or did you? No, it's. No, of course not. I just really want to thank all the work that our elections committee did to pull this together. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of phone calls and talking to people about thinking about running and 